Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Rob's Retro Garage. I'm Rob, and if this is your first time here, then welcome. And if it's not your first time here, then uh, welcome back. I appreciate you joining me. Um, and if you don't mind, please hit the like and subscribe button. That really helps me out a lot. Uh, not asking you for any money or anything like that. Just uh, like and subscribe. Um, so these are the wheel hubs from the uh, 1977 Corvette. And you can see I've painted them. Um, and you'll notice there's something here we'll talk about in, uh, in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> but what my plan today is, is I'm going to press new races into these uh, uh, wheel hubs. And then we're going to pack the bearings and put the bearings in place. And uh, I'm also going to put in the uh, wheel studs, which is what this was. I, I didn't realize this. I, I probably should have sanded these down, sanded this down, but I'm not terribly uh, worried about it. I can use a different hole. Well, not really. I mean, they're all, they're different sizes. So I may, I may yet have to go back and sand this down, but um, there was a wheel stud that was broken and whoever the owner of the car was uh, decided that instead of spending a dollar or two for these things, whoops, how'd that get in there? For these things, that they would just use a standard, whoops, they would just use a standard bolt and uh, they tack welded it in. If you can see those are raised up, that's what that was. The bolt was, uh, was actually welded in. Uh, I think it went from the other side, actually. But at any rate, they welded it in. Um, <clears throat> so that's why in the original bolts, I only have nine. Um, and I went to uh, Napa and they didn't have enough new bolts, so they gave me uh, seven. So I think instead of just buying three new ones, I'm gonna pick the three best ones uh, out of the old ones. And I'm gonna put them on my wire wheel here and I'm gonna uh, clean them up and uh, get them looking nice. And then we'll uh, clean the threads and then we'll put them uh, in, the, uh, in the wheel hub. So we're gonna talk about how you get the bolts in the wheel hub. We're gonna talk about how you get the races in. We're gonna talk about the bearings and which bearings go where. Um, because there's a large bearing and there's a small bearing. And you can see here I've got a large bearing and small bearing. I've also got uh, the oil seals. There's only two of those that I'm gonna use. The other two are for the, uh, for the back ones when I take the rear suspension apart. So, but we've got the, the uh, bearing or the, the uh, race uh, driver kit here. This was about 30 bucks from uh, Amazon. And I'd rather have my own than just have to go out and rent one because you never know when you're really gonna get around to doing this stuff. And it's been several weeks since I did these. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And um, yeah, so I'll show you some pictures of the different things that I, uh, different uh, materials that I bought to do this. And then we'll talk about the trick to getting in the, uh, the easy way to get in the wheel studs, and uh, then we'll press in the seals. Um, or we may do the seals first and then the wheel studs, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, anyway, let's get started. All right, let's talk about the bearings. <clears throat> there are two bearings. Uh, as you can see here, there's a smaller bearing and there's a larger bearing. Um, the places that they go in are actually obvious. You can tell that this bearing hole is bigger than this bearing hole. I just flipped this this entire assembly upside down from the introduction video. I had them both uh, right side up. So if you look at the bearing, you'll see each bearing comes with a new race, right? So we just pull that out and there's the large bearing and you try to put it in the small hole and it won't go in the small hole but you try and put it in the larger hole and it seats in there uh, just almost perfectly. It's a little, little wobbly, but there we go. You see, it sits in there just perfectly to be pressed in. And the same way with the smaller bearing. The smaller bearing sits right in that hole, but of course, if you try to put it in this one, you'll see that this hole is quite a bit larger than the bearing is. Also, you'll notice that the bearing is beveled. Uh, this lip is thinner than this lip. 
So this lip goes down. That's the lip that you, you're gonna push against if you ever try to take these bearings out. And if you look in here, you'll notice that there's a little divot right there and right there. And over here, you can see it. You can see that one's got a large divot there and um, it's got a large divot right there. You see that? Let me, uh, let me find something I can point with and uh, we'll see. Okay, now you're gonna laugh, but I got my pointer. I saw Sarah Intuned uses one of these and I thought it was absolutely hilarious. So <laughs> I got myself a two pack of them. But you can see right there, there's a little divot and I'm gonna move this so it's just below the divot, right? Can you see that? See where it goes in on the side there? You see where this one is right there and now it's just below it. That one's a little harder to see, the light's a little better angle that way. And then if you look over here, you'll see that's one right there and that's one right there. And that's where you push these divots out. What you would do is you would take a chisel, uh, a chisel or um, uh, some type of uh, uh, tool that uh, doesn't have a, a tremendously sharp head on it because you really don't want to damage. I mean, I guess it's okay because it's, <clears throat> it's steel, so you're really not going to hurt it much. But anyway, you would flip this over on the back side, and then you would hammer at that, at that point and at that point and the race would come out. That's all that those are there for, is just to, uh, just to get the races out. And that's to get the upper race out. Well, upper, I say upper. But that's to get the smaller race out. And uh, the, these are the spots to get the larger race out. Um, so, and we'll see if we can't see what that looks like when I put the, uh, the race back in. But uh, as I said, you got a large race, that's a small, or I'm sorry, a large bearing. That's a small race. Uh, I just switched them up. All right, and there you go. And it goes upside down in the bearing, or in the race, the bearing goes in the race. You see the bearing is also angled, so it will not really go in like that. You see how it sits up, and you don't want it to sit up. You want it to, to go in, oops, I'm dropping everything here. You want it to sit in and go down so it's nice and flush. And the same with that one. So that's how they should sit in the, uh, in the race. The bearing should sit in the race like that. Okay? Okay, so tell me how I did. Those were the three bolts I cleaned on the bench grinder. That's what they used to look like. That's what they look like now, and that's the brand new one. I think they look pretty good. I mean, there might be a little stuff still in the threads, but I'm not worried about that. You know, that's going to be covered up by the uh, lug nuts anyway. But um, let's get a little closer look at them. I think those look pretty good. I think that little bench grinder did a good job. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Okay, so I got the first one in. <clears throat> and you'll see in the back it's all the way in, nice and snug. I ground that, that uh, one area down, uh, the one that I pointed out earlier. I ground it down on both sides. And that went in just perfectly fine. So I'm going to paint that over, that nut over, and uh, or the bolt over, and the uh, and that spot with uh, POR15 uh, when I'm done. But <clears throat> here's how I did it, right? I took one of the bolts, right? And you can only put them in these holes. They don't fit in those holes. So you put it in from behind like that until it stops pretty much 
and then you take some washers, and I'm using four of them. I put a little, whoops, there goes one of them. I put a little grease on the back of one of the washers and put it down over that. So I put all four down on top of it just to give it a little extra cushion, just like that. And then I took this lug nut, which is a 7 uh, and it's a three, it uses three quarter inch socket. So I put that on there and just threaded it all the way down. La, 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 la. Thread it all the way down, just like that. And then you take a uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> I can't think of what it's called right now, um, uh, impact, and you put the impact on it and you torque this down until it becomes flat like that one is on the back and then you're done and then you just reverse it and take them off so it's a pretty easy process let's whoops this this thing is a little loose so i don't know why um these sockets are a little loose on my impact but it works fine nonetheless I'm gonna to need to hold it. I can't do it with uh, with one hand, but but that's essentially what you do. <laughs> that just flew right off. So that's essentially what you do to uh, torque it down. And there we go. One, two, three, four, five. All five are in. So I think we're good. You can see they're all nice and tight. up against the, uh, so, look, all right. Yeah, that one's okay, I think. Anyway, they're all, uh, they're all in, so I'm gonna do the other hub. And here's the second one. You can still see there's grease on it, but um, I'll clean that up, but I got them all in. I mean, they're nice and snug in there. <clears throat> and I didn't mention this earlier, but this is the large diameter hole. And this is the small diameter hole. So you put them in from the back through the large hole. And <clears throat> I don't see anywhere that I really found online to explain that. But this is how I know this is the way it works is because of this one that I had to grind down. They tack welded the back of that particular screw uh, or stud, well, it was really a screw, it wasn't a stud. <clears throat> they just used whatever they had, but uh, it was a 7 16 shaft. And anyway, they, they tack welded it in. So they tack welded the head. They wouldn't have tack welded the shaft. So <clears throat> that means the head goes there and it comes through and you can see I can get both of them in at the same time, that that's the smaller diameter and that's the larger diameter hole. So that's how they go in. Hope that helps. Okay, so I'm gonna try and put the bearings in the, uh, in the uh, wheel hub today. So, or the races, rather, and pack the bearings. So, this is one bearing and one race. And this is the larger race. So, that'll fit right in there. And you can tell it's the larger one because it just obviously won't fit in the smaller one. So, what we need to do is over here we've got our bearing press kit. Um, so we need to find a race that's a little small. Can you see how that's just a little small? Um, let's try this one. This is a number six. Yeah, I think that one's 
I don't know, the other one might work. That's a little, a little fat. Okay, well, maybe that one will work. So, and I had to smooth out the inside of the race in there. There were some punches in the wall where I had damaged it a little bit, trying to get the other race out. So we take this. And we just put it in there like that. I'll get down here to look at it. It's not quite in their level. I don't know if that's actually in their level or not. That does not look like it is. Seems like it's a little lopsided in there. It's not quite even. Seems like it's a little high back here. drink fell off. That's okay. It's still a tad hot. Okay. Now, I think that's, that's about right. I should feel this when it bottoms out. So it's not quite, I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see how it looks like it's not, get my fat thumb out of the way. Can you see how it's not quite seated in there? 
yeah. So it's not quite as far down as it needs to go. change get it from this side I think that's pretty close I might tap it another time or two A new Christmas present. <laughs> yep, I think that's about as down south as that's going to go. All right, let's do the other side now. So that was the large bearing. I guess that's considered the inner bearing and this is the outer bearing because this is what the, these are the studs that the, the uh, can't think of the name of them right now. It's been a long day, can you tell? Um, that the uh, lug nuts attach the wheel to. Seth, that's just about perfect. I think that's already going to be in there pretty good. Wow, that was a, a knife. up right there. There it goes. Now it's seated. Could you hear the difference in those uh, in the, the sound when I was hitting it? When it got in? When it got seated in? It made a different noise. Let's get it from the other side. Yep, I think that's good. And I'll go do the other one uh, off camera, but that's how you get the, uh, the races in. Um, when I come back, we'll uh, use my bearing packer and the grease gun and we'll pack those bearings and uh, we'll get this thing on the road. Well, not literally, it's, not, it's nowhere near ready for the road yet. Okay guys, so here's what we're gonna use. This was pretty cheap, this is only about 10 bucks. So I went ahead and bought this. This is for uh, packing bearings, specifically wheel bearings. So what you do is you unscrew this, the top comes off. You take your bearing, you put your bearing in there, put this back on, and you tighten it down so the bearing is in there. And it's a little uneven, but let's let's see if we can't even it up. OK, 
Okay, that's pretty good. Can you see how the bearing fits in there? And then you take your grease gun, which is this thing right here, and you take this fitting, and you put this fitting over the top like that, and then you just pump grease into it, and it will bubble out, and it will fill that bearing. So let me fill up my grease gun, and we'll come back, and I'll do that. Hey, guys. I'm back. Okay, so I have a properly filled grease gun. You can see the grease right there, just around the fitting. And hopefully, it'll come out. Not quite sure how to actually get that on there. I mean, it feels like there's grease going through the gun because there's resistance. Let's see if it's working. Let's actually unscrew this a little. Yep, I see grease in there. I think the key is you don't want that on there too tight. Oh, yes. There we go. Can you see the grease coming out? Oh, yes. So pretty. releasing that pressure I don't think it can take any more so let's pop that off And see how it did. Oh wow, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? And now I got that hole in it, so let's take this over here and we'll fill that in. Sides. Fill that hole back in, buddy. So, well, yes, this is messy. Um, 
I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to flip that over. I should have done the smaller one first. Let's put that one there. And I had another smaller one set out. Just have to use that one. And we'll get you. Move you over here. Messy business. Messy, messy business. Grease of grease, wherefore art thou? All right, we'll come back when I got grease. Okay, guys, there's the other one packed. We'll just drop that right in. Put a little more grease on the back side of it. Get it all nice and covered and thick. got my seal right here which goes on just like that and then we just gently tap it tap it into place there we go That looks good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of plastic bags here. Ziploc bags. I just picked these. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that over that to keep that grease supple. doesn't dry out because I don't know how long it's going to be before I'm able to uh, finish this. So. Put several of these pieces on. Another one, that one, all balled up on me. And of course, this isn't going to be 
airtight and it's certainly not going to be perfect but um the seal on this side will keep the large one in i need to uh put something directly over the top of the smaller one to hold it in there <laughs> get out of the way boy get out of the way I say I need to put a little bit more back in there cover what came out and this is where the spindle comes through and it it will take a washer that will fit over that Castle nut that'll hold that in. All right. Now you just want to hold that, you want to hold it in place. figure it out won't we guys and gals we shall figure it out That should be more than enough to keep that small one from falling out. I'll put one more on the side. I know it kind of looks like it's all rigged up half-ass here, but hopefully this should only need to hold it for a month or so. And uh, I'll wind up doing the other one off camera because there's no reason for you to watch me do this twice. And there we go. It's ready to uh, go on the car. So I'm going to put it back in the parts bin and uh, we'll just uh, take it as it comes. Thanks for watching, guys.